Hello, Buckeye Nation. My name is Lisa, and I'm the gal behind Buckeye Football Fangirl. This week, the Buckeyes face off against the Indiana Hoosiers, who have not had a great year so far. They've started the year off three and four, losing to Iowa, Cincinnati, Penn State, and most recently to Michigan State last weekend. With struggles on offense, especially in the red zone, this season, unfortunately, has not started off with the same magic that they were surrounded with last year. Let's take a look at the team we'll see on the field this Saturday in just a minute. I hope you all enjoyed your bye week. Mine was extremely productive, but this was the general sentiment that I saw around Twitter. Missing Buckeye football this Saturday. After last week's bye week, I am ready for some Buckeye football, baby. As Seabuff Buck said, fall Saturdays with out Buckeye football are just wrong. It's like putting broccoli on a peanut butter sandwich. Ugh. I miss seeing the scarlet and gray play last weekend. And while I'm glad that they got a breather before this final slaughter of games, I am excited to see six in a row. I'd like to know which game you're looking forward to the most. I personally can't wait until the Penn State game on a Halloween weekend. I have a feeling it's going to be epic. But leave me a comment about which one that you're looking forward to seeing the most down below. And thank you so much to all who have taken the time to comment. I truly appreciate it. So let's take a look at who's up next. Indiana. Overall, the Buckeyes and the Hoosiers have met a total of 93 times. Ohio State has won 76 times. They've tied five times. And Indiana has won 12 times. That ain't too shabby. However, I don't know if you all remember, but that 2020 game against Indiana was not for the faint of heart. Our former QB1, Justin Fields, played perhaps his worst game of this season last time that we saw Indiana on the field, and they almost stole our playoff dreams away from us. I, for one, really, really, really hope that we don't get another repeat of that game on Saturday. Honestly, it's really hard to know what we'll see on the field this Saturday. Michael Penix Jr. has been battling another injury this season, which is a genuine shame. This year, a shoulder injury has been plaguing him and caused him to miss the game last weekend against Michigan State. Nobody knows if he will be healthy enough to play, and so we may see him on the field, or we may see the backup quarterback, Jack Tuttle. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's take a half a step backwards and talk about Indiana's head coach, Tom Allen, first. He's currently in his fifth year as their head coach and was originally hired in 2016 to serve as the defensive coordinator for head coach at that time, Kevin Wilson. And then he was named the head coach in December of that same year when Kevin Wilson suddenly resigned. He's born and raised in Indiana, and so this job is personal to him in more ways than one. He's well-versed on the defensive side of the football. Thus, Indiana's defense has become the strength of the team since he's been there. This year, they're ranked 55th in total defense, while Ohio State is 77 for context. And they're pretty balanced against both the pass and the rush. He's done some great things while rebuilding the program at Indiana. He's done some pretty great things while rebuilding the program at Indiana. And one of the best, in my opinion, is centering everything on his motto, L-E-O, love each other. I dig it. And I think that we all need to do that a whole lot more. Coach Allen is fiercely loved by his players and is a fiery, emotional coach known for getting beat up while celebrating with his players. Think black eyes, cuts on his face, even knocked out front teeth. He actually describes himself as high strung, excitable, and naturally caffeinated. Switching over to the quarterback, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the show, we're not sure who we'll get to see on the field. It could be Michael Penix Jr. if he's healthy enough or Jack Tuttle. If we do see Penix, you should know that he originally committed to Tennessee, but his scholarship was pulled after the coaching change. I personally think that 
turned out to be a blessing in disguise for him. He has battled a series of injuries on and off his entire career, including a season-ending collarbone injury and a season-ending torn ACL. He's talented, and I feel for him as he just can't seem to catch a break from all these injuries. If we see Jack Tuttle on the field on Saturday, you should know that there is some history between Tuttle and Ohio State. In fact, I thank God for Jack Tuttle because he is what led Chris Olave to Ohio State. He's one of Olave's best friends from high school and was being considered for the quarterback position by Coach Day. As the story goes, Coach Day went in to visit Tuttle in San Diego, which is where he had the opportunity to see Chris Olave catching passes from Tuttle. So. Thank God for Jack Tuttle. Tuttle started his college career at Utah before transferring to Indiana. His high school coach notes that his kindness is one of his top qualities. Tuttle doesn't have Penix's arm strength, but he is a more nimble and effective runner. He was the backup for Penix at the end of last year and had to step in this past week when they played Michigan State. Unfortunately, he was unable to lead his team to a win against Michigan State, throwing two interceptions and being sacked three times. Looking at the wide receiver group, Ty Freifogel is currently their leading wide receiver. Last year, you might remember him as the one who gave us all a massive headache. Last year, he racked up 218 receiving yards on seven receptions and gave me at least 20 gray hairs during the game. You all, those stats are extra crazy because through six games this year, he only has 272 yards total. He's a tough, gritty, versatile player who has the frame of a bigger bodied possession receiver and is still said to play even bigger than his size, oftentimes using his size to go up and catch balls over other players. He's on the more reserved and quiet side, but he plays quite deadly on the field. Ultimately, he is a threat that should be taken seriously, as a lot are saying that he has the potential to become the first Indiana wide receiver to be drafted to the NFL since 2014. So moving on to the next player to know, it must be the year of the tight end at Indiana because Peyton Hendershot is actually leading their team with receptions with 274 yards as a tight end. Hendershot received lots of praise from the coaches recently who said that he worked his tail off to get better during the offseason. All that hard work appears to be paying off for him. On the defensive side of the ball, graduate transfer defensive lineman Ryder Anderson has been making some noise. He currently leads the team with 29 total tackles after transferring from Ole Miss. Ironically, he announced his intention to transfer to Indiana merely days after Old Miss defeated the Hoosiers in the Outback Bowl. He is a major pass rush threat, which is exactly why he decided to transfer so that he could log more play on the edge. He stepped easily into a leadership role on Indiana's defensive line and will be a force to reckon with this Saturday. Taiwan Mullen is one of the leading defensive backs on the team, but he is also unfortunately battling injuries. He's been unable to play the past two games due to an undisclosed leg injury, so I'm not sure if we'll get to see him on the field this week either. If he does play, you should know that he has been called the sacker of quarterbacks. He's also been part of what he's termed the new wave of talent coming to Indiana and is intent on helping write a new chapter in the history of Indiana football. I am so looking forward to this game on Saturday. It should be a great game for our team to get back into things after a week off of rest. While I agree with Megs that bye weeks are boring, I think this next stretch of games will be anything but boring. Before I sign off, I want to leave you with this final Twitter morsel for thought. I thought it was especially relevant given that our defense has given us all fits earlier in the season and was one of the major reasons why Indiana was able to hang with us so scary last year. Courtesy of Mr. Ohio, this may make you see our defense in a different light. All you hear about is how bad Ohio State's defense is. I would just like to point out 
that they are allowing less points per game than Alabama's defense. They also have the most defensive touchdowns in the nation. That is a 100% interesting point in my book. And I completely agree with Scott's response to it. Fact. Buckeyes control their own destiny. Win out and they're in. It's going to be an intense stretch of games, but one game at a time. The Buckeyes do truly control their own destiny as long as they stay focused. Indiana will hopefully be a good tune-up to get the juices flowing again. And then on to the rest. I'm going to be so excited to watch football this Saturday. I'll see you on the other side of the game. Oh, peach.